Yahuwah, our mighty God, we thank you, Father, for the wonders, graces, and blessings you bestowed each upon every one of us. Thank you, Father, for guiding us through, throughout our travel through this wicked world and allowing us to be gathered here together once again to serve and glorify your most holy name. We humbly ask you, God, to please continue to be with us. Continue to take care of us each and every day. Give us the strength that we need, O oh Father, to overcome any hardship and obstacle that we may be facing, O oh God, so that we may be continue to be firm in our faith, O oh Father, and continue to stay true in following your words and serving and glorifying your most holy name, Yahuwah. Yahusha, we also call upon you, O oh Lord. Thank you, O oh Lord, for all the many things that you've done for us. We humbly ask you, O oh Lord, to please continue to mediate all our prayers unto the Father, so that everything we ask in your name may be granted unto us. Yahuwah, we return unto you once more, humbly asking you to please once again help all of us, O oh Father. Continue to provide us the strength that we need to overcome any hardship or illness, O oh God, so that we may return together, O oh Father, in service unto your most holy name. Forgive us once again for all the sins that we've committed and also accept the offering that we've given unto you today as we ask all of this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahushua the Christ. Amen. brothers and sisters in the faith, fellow Yahushin. At this part of our worship, once again, we will study God's words, but we are going to include something else, a little bit of American history. That's why, you know, our title for today is about Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day. It's already November and it's November is almost over. And we know that Americans to celebrate Thanksgiving Day. What is that all about? We have to understand, beloved brethren, what Thanksgiving Day is all about. And we as Yahushans, how, who do we think actually? Who do Americans are thinking when it is Thanksgiving Day? Why do we need to know? Because right now, we are all adopted children of this country. Many of us, I should say. Those who were born here, you were born here. You are an, you are an American. But those who were granted privilege to uh, be a naturalized American, like me and the rest, we are still Americans. So we need to know the history, a little bit of history of what's going on in this country or what is actually Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving Day is a national holiday in the United States. So I'm going to tell you a little bit of story. So it is a national holiday in the United States. And Thanksgiving 2021 this year occurs on Thursday, November the 25th this year, right? In 1621, the Plymouth colonists and the Wampanoag 
shared an autumn harvest feast that is acknowledged today as one of the first Thanksgiving celebrations in the colonies. The Wampanoag are one of many nations of people all over North America who were here long before any Europeans arrived and have survived until today. Many people use the word Indian to describe them, but they prefer, according to them, them they themselves, prefer to be called native people. Their name, according to this tribe, Wampanoag means people of the first light. For more than two centuries, beloved brethren, two centuries, days of Thanksgiving were celebrated by individual colonies and states. It wasn't until 1863, in the midst of the Civil War, that President, probably you know this President, Abraham Lincoln, proclaimed a national Thanksgiving Day to be held each November. Now, in September 1620, a small ship called the Mayflower left Plymouth, England, carrying 102 passengers, an assortment of religious separatists seeking a new home where they could freely practice their faith and other individuals lured by the promise of prosperity and land ownership in the new world, which is America today. After a treacherous and uncomfortable crossing that lasted 66 days, they dropped anchor where near the tip of Cape Cod, and that was far north of their intended destination at the mouth of the Hudson River, which is by New York. One month later, the Mayflower crossed Massachusetts Bay. So now you know what's what happened in the past, right? A little bit of it. You can read it too. Our uh, it was excerpted from history website, Massachusetts Bay, where the Pilgrims, as they are now commonly known, began the work of establishing a village at Plymouth. Throughout that first brutal winter, most of the colonists remained on board the ship. They did not went ashore. They made on board the ship, Mayflower, where they suffered from exposure, scurvy, and outbreaks of contagious disease. Only half, according to history, according to the record of history, only half of the Mayflower's passengers, original passengers and crew, lived to see their first New England spring. In March, the remaining settlers moved ashore. So from the ship, they moved ashore. When did it happen? March. Where they received an astonishing visit from a member of the Abenakai tribe who greeted them in English. The Abenaki, Abenaki, they say, are an indigenous ethnic group in North America officially recognized by the United States of America uh, as an indigenous group, right? As a Native American tribe. And it is also recognized in Canada as a First Nation. Now, Abenaki is a linguistic and geographic grouping. Historically, there was no strong central authority. The Abenaki were composed of numerous smaller bands and tribes who shared many cultural traits. They came together as a post contact community after the original tribes were disseminated by colonization, disease, and warfare. Now, several days later, he returned with another Native American, Squanto, a member of the Patoxet, Patoxet tribe who had been kidnapped by an English sea captain and sold into slavery. So this is a uh, little bit story of the Native Americans. So this uh, Squanto 
who was a member of the Patakse tribe, has been kidnapped by the English uh, uh, by an English sea captain and sold into slavery before escaping to London and returning to his homeland on an exploratory expedition. Now, Wampanoag, a local tribe which could endure for more than 50 years and tragically remains one of the sole examples of harmony between Europeans and European colonists and Native Americans. Now in November of 1621, so uh, after the pilgrim's first corn harvest proved successful, Governor William Bradford organized a celebratory feast and invited a group of the pledge, uh, fledgling colonies, Native American allies, including the Wampanoag Chief Massasoit, now remembered as American first Thanksgiving. So that's the history of the Thanksgiving here in America, right? Our harvest being gotten in our governor sent four men on Pauli that so we might after a special manner rejoice together after we had gathered the fruits of our labor. So they were blessed, you know, the harvest was plentiful, okay? And upon the captain and others and Although it be not always be plentiful as it was at this time with us, yet by the goodness of God, we are so far from want that we often wish your partakers of our plenty. So what's this Thanksgiving? It has something to do with their thanking God. Thanking God for the harvest being plentiful. So it started a long, long time ago. So 200 plus years ago. So these people, the Americans, were thanking God for so long. If, if you can notice, beloved brethren, that the United States is the only country in, you know, in, in, in which they say as part of their culture, in God we trust. That's what America is all about. So Thanksgiving here in America is about thanking God for his blessings. Remember, they left Europe because there were lots of persecutions there. So they left Europe so that they can practice their faith, their religion freely. And for some, a new frontier, a blessing, a land, to own a land. That's what had happened. So from then on, they kept on thanking and thanking God every year. And it so happened that will be every last Thursday of November every year. So that's the story. That's how the American people are actually thanking God. Now we are part of the American culture now. Now what is our reason for giving thanks to Yahuwah, our God, besides the bountiful blessings that he is giving us, Yahushua. Let us read here in Ephesians chapter 1 and the verses 3. Let us give thanks to the God and Father of our Lord, Yahushua the Christ. For in our union with the Christ, he has blessed us by giving us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. So what is our reason, beloved brethren, for giving thanks to Yahuwah our God besides his material blessing? Well, the most important blessings that we are actually receiving is the spiritual blessing. And because of that, we are thanking God, the father of our Lord Yahushua the Christ, for giving us that spiritual blessing in the heavenly world. Now, what are these spiritual blessings? We are grateful and thankful to Yahuwah, our God. Let us continue reading what the Apostle Paul has to say. 2 Corinthians 2, 14, then 16 to 17. But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in the Christ, and through us spreads and makes evident everywhere the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of him. To the latter one, an aroma from death to death, a fatal offensive odor, but to the other, an aroma from life to life, a vital fragrance living and fresh. 
and who is adequate and sufficiently qualified for these things. For we are not like many acting like merchants peddling God's word, shortchanging and adulterating God's message, but from pure and compromised motives as commissioned and sent from God. We speak his message in the Christ in the sight of God. Now what, beloved brethren, are these spiritual blessings? We are grateful and thankful to Yahuwah. First, he leads us in triumph in the Christ. We Yahushans are not a fatal offensive odor, but an aroma from life to life. A vital fragrance, living and fresh. Like what the Apostle Paul said, unlike others, other worshippers became to others, other worshippers became their consumers, isn't it? We are not like many act, many acting like merchants. Our ministers are not business people, peddling, selling for profit God's words, shortchanging and adulterating God's message. See, what we are actually reading, beloved brethren, is what God wants us to see and to understand. It's just right there. We don't need to adulterate those words. See, it is very clearly recorded. We thank God for the spiritual blessings. We thank him too for the material blessings. But as we have already studied in the past, material blessings, we only need that while we are journeying here on earth. But the spiritual blessings, we need that while we are sojourning here on earth and making certain that we made it to the kingdom of our God. And we will continue to worship God over there. See, we do not, beloved brethren, in the church of Yahushua, we do not sell or peddler, peddling or selling for profit God's words. We are not shortchanging and adulterating. God's message. We are not supposed to do that. You know, just to, you know, there are, there are some people who are adulterating it to gain profit from it because they are enjoying their luxurious life from those who believers. See, we make the Christ happy. We make God happy, not our preachers. We offer soul to God. Not to a birthday celebrant. That's why you know in verse 16 it says there. To the latter one an aroma from death to death. A fatal offensive odor. To God that kind of act is an offensive odor. But those who truly are of the Christ. Those who truly are of Yahuwah. That's what we are thanking God for. Well according to what we have read. We are. An aroma from life to life. A vital fragrance. Living and fresh. And who is adequate. And sufficiently qualified. For these things. We Yahushians. Have pure. And compromised motives. As commissioned. And sent from God. We speak solely. His message in the Christ, in the sight of Yahuwah himself. No adding, no subtracting from God's words, no twisting so that people will have fear to follow a preacher or to follow a leader. But still, we are not to judge what others believe, beloved brethren. We are not to judge them. We are just comparing. We're not judging them on what they were doing. We are all entitled to believe what makes sense to us. They are entitled to believe what makes sense to them. We are entitled to believe what makes sense to us. Being a Yahushan, the doctrine that we are receiving makes sense to us. It is clear to us that this is where we're going to stay. This is what we are going to continue to keep for as long as we are sojourning here in this world. And we will keep on thanking our God because of that. Now, who are the people who are vital, fragrance, and living and fresh to Yahuwah according to the prophecy? In Isaiah 24, 14, we are very familiar with this. 
They raise their voices. They shout for joy from the West. They acclaim Yahuwah's majesty. So who are the people today who are vital, fragrance, and living and fresh to Yahuwah? We, beloved brethren, those who are from the West, we are the people who acclaim, praise enthusiastically and publicly for Yahuwah's majesty. We are the one being proud of that name. Although others, they are mocking it, they don't want to accept. That God has a name. They even accuse us. Well, you know what? God has many names, but he got no personal name. Oh, how did it happen? It doesn't make sense. That's why they're entitled to believe what makes sense to them. Probably to them. It makes sense to them. But for me, and probably for many of us here in the Church of Yahusha, that doesn't make sense, isn't it? Because the Bible also said, hallowed be thy name. How can you hallow the name of God unless you know it? And his name is Yahuwah. And we from the West, where are we right now, beloved brethren? From the country who says, in God we trust. This is where we, can, we are now. God brought us from the East to here. And God gathered us here in the West. For what? For the West, we will proclaim. Yahuwah's majesty. And that happened amongst Yahushans today. This prophecy, beloved brethren, is fulfilled in us, Yahusha. And because of that, we are part of this prophecy. We are so grateful. We know what happened to the Eastern people, right? If you will continue 14, 15 to 16, East betrayed God or Yahuwah. But the West, according to what we have read, they acclaimed Yahuwah's majesty that's what we have done now because of this what do we intend to continuously do as yahushians in psalms 111 1 to 9 this is what we can read praise yahuwah i will thank yahuwah with all my heart as i meet with his godly people how amazing are the deeds of the of yahuwah all who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. Who can forget the wonders he performed? How gracious and merciful is Yahuwah. He gives food to those who trust him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations all he does is just and good and all his commandments are trustworthy they are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity he has paid a full ransom for his people he has guaranteed his covenant with them forever what a holy, oh, inspiring name he has. Beloved brethren, what do we intend to continuously do as Yahushans? To praise Yahuwah. To thank Yahuwah. How are we going to thank him? With all our heart. Is that all? We are just going to say thank you to him? No. But to obey him faithfully and with integrity. We must have integrity in obeying God's law. You know, when it comes to obedience to God's will, we have to do it with integrity. No matter what happens, we will continue to do and follow what Yahuwah asked us to do. If you still remember the three Hebrews, you know, when they were told to kneel before a graven idol and they were threatened to be thrown in a furnace. To be burned what did they say we are not going to serve your god king we will continue to serve our god whether he saves us or he doesn't we will continue to serve our god that's why yahushans have that kind of mentality we are not here just for salvation 
You know, many people, you ask them, why are you in a religious group? Why are you doing these things? Because I want to be saved. Oh, so because you want to be saved. That's all you want to have? Salvation? That's a bonus that God will give. That's a promise. Yes, that's a promise. But are we going to serve God because of a reward? Or are we going to serve God because we are indebted to him? Because we love him so much? Because he has done many good deeds to us. And that's how you serve God with integrity. Not because of a reward. But because of what we believe. That God is our creator. God. Is the one who gives us things to survive every day. God is our God who created all of us. So we praise him because he is our God. We thank him because he is our God. Not because he had a promise to us. We obey him faithfully and with integrity. Whether he save us or not. He, we will obey and serve him. That is the policy that we have in mind. That's what I believe. And that's what I'm sharing with other Yahushians. Again, what makes sense to you? You're entitled to believe. This is what makes sense to us as ministers in the church of Yahushua. And that's why we are sharing. We thank God. You know, many people are thanking God. Like this country. Very thankful to God. They are even shouting about it, that in God they trust. But as Yahushans, the more we have to be trusting, trustful to our God. Now what is Yahuwah's instruction as we continue to obey Him faithfully and with integrity? Let's hear what the scripture says in Isaiah 41.10. There is another prophecy about us. Fear not, there is nothing to fear. For I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of rightness and justice. Love your brothers and sisters in the faith. What is Yahuwah's instruction as we continue to obey him faithfully and with integrity? You heard. He said, fear not. Why? There is nothing to fear. Why is there nothing to fear? I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. That's what he said. I will help you. I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand. Of righteousness and justice. You know many people thought it differently. That they say. Well where you strengthen. Is the church of Yahushua. You Yahushans are you strengthened? Do you have this building? Do you have that? Do you have this? Do you have that? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you help people? Can you not? Well they are capitalizing on the material wealth. That they do have. Some people are like that. right? Some people believe that. God's blessing comes only. On that, that the strength will come only uh, with material wealth. Well, let's find out. Is the strength Yahuwah will provide is in the form of material wealth only? What's more, the, the more it will be provided. How is it more the all the more going to be provided? Like what others believe it to be. You know that material wealth will make you strong. Well, let us read. In Ephesians, this is what the Apostle Paul said. 6.10. 14 to 17. In conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from Him, so not from money, not from buildings, brethren. Draw your strength from Him and be empowered through your union with Him. Who's that Him? Yahusha. The Christ and in the power of his boundless might. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide band of truth. We get the truth, beloved brethren. 
personal integrity, we got that. Moral courage, we got that. Around your waist and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart, we have that. And having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god now beloved brethren is the strength yahoo will provide is in the form of material wealth only no actually that's not how he's going to make us strong like what others believe it to be they are strong because they are all over they are strong because they have money they are strong because they have all of these uh, properties oh wait a minute that's not the way you are going to be strengthened according to what we can read from the holy scriptures we are drawing strength from the christ we are being empowered through our union with him and because of that we got everything that god provides to combat our spiritual enemy you know we took the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit or the sword of god which is the word of yahuwah himself See, we got the double-edged sword. When we hacking on them, they can no longer what? Answer. We hacking on them. We, we, we are actually, you know, giving them the arrow, the, the flaming arrows. And the flaming arrows, they are hard, trying to hit us. We are blocking it with the words of God. And that's the fact today. So it is the spiritual strength that God will provide the wide band of truth, our personal integrity, our moral courage, the breastplate of righteousness, or an upright heart. We don't condemn people. We don't tell people, hey, because you're not with us, you're not going to be saved. Look at that. You're condemning people. We don't do that. Why? Because we know every human being, every soul has a chance for that salvation. It is God who will give that salvation. But there are two ways to receive that salvation. You face the judge or you go straight in heaven. We as Yahushua said, well, we believe that our salvation, we go straight to the heavens. We don't need to face the judge. But everybody else will face the judge. What will be the judgment? We don't know. It could be life. It could be death. We don't know. Because there is only one judge who knows the judgment. It is Yahuwah, our God. We got the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace, not the gospel of war. Like what others were saying, they even, oh, this is war. War about what? Huh? And we have the gospel of peace to face the enemy with firm booted stability. That's why our argument is so strong, they cannot actually make it unstable. We are ready to produce the good news, right? That's what we can. Do as Yahushua. The prospective shield of faith with which we can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The evil one will keep on attacking us, but we can actually distinguish or extinguish all the flaming arrows. We have the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is his words. It is knowing what God wants his people to understand his truth. The pure gospel written. That's what we have right now as Yahushua. That is our strength, beloved brethren. Knowing we are on the right track. What we believe makes sense. Now, is it our own action which will help us triumph? Well, let us read here in Psalms 42 11. But, oh my soul, don't be discouraged, don't be upset. Expect God to act, for I know that I shall again have plenty of reason to praise Him 
for all that he will do. He is my help. He is my God. Now, is it our own action which will help us triumph? No, we'll have a brethren. God's action will make us triumphant. So our soul, we are not discouraged, but and we are not upset because we are expecting God's action. We shall again have plenty of reason to praise him for all that he will do. That's why we are so grateful all the time. We always thank him every time we come for worship. What's the proof of that? Beloved brother, nobody who prayed in a worship service like this have forgotten to mention when they pray. Thank you, God. Are we not? Even if the person, if even those who are not ministers are praying in, a, in our worship service like this, what do they say in the prayer? Thank you, God. We always thank God. Every time we gather ourselves like this, we are grateful. We are thankful for what he has done, especially for that spiritual blessings that he continuously showered upon us, that he is giving us the strength to move on. We can continue our religious obligation to him in a righteous manner. Not because somebody told us to do, but because we ourselves investigated it. You know, that's the problem with some. If you ask people, why do you believe? Well, because I heard it from a preacher. Did you bother to investigate what that preacher actually said? No, oh, no, I don't need to. He's a man of God. No, you must. The apostle Paul was a man of God. But when he preached to the Bereans, the Bereans investigated if what the apostle Paul was actually speaking about is the truth. Do you have to make sure of that? You see, beloved brethren, that's who we are as Yahushans today. We are not just going to nod our heads saying, I agree, I agree. We doubt us investigating. Remember, according to what we have read, there are those who are peddling God's words, acting like business people. Oh, not only that, they are twisting God's instruction. You know, what the Bible is saying is not what they are telling the people. The message in the scriptures is different from the message that they are telling people. Like what we have already studied in the past. In Matthew 18, 18, they were saying they have the privilege or they have that authority to register people so that they could be registered in heaven. We already debunked that. That's not about registration. It's about how to make certain that bridging will not have animosity with one another. What is it supposed to do as a leader? You know, It's not registration. You know, being given the privilege to register somebody so that they would be registered in heaven. We have already studied many things, beloved brethren. We will keep on reminding everyone because many are actually using the words of God, peddling, profiting from it. Oh, what are those? Well, you already know. People are saying, hey, you know what? We have to unite whenever we cast our vote. Why? Because the Bible said so. But well, the Bible did not say that. The Bible said unite in faith. I can read that. But I cannot read in the Holy Scriptures unite in casting your vote. Can you read it? And then they will keep on reading something and try to twist our minds. Oh, this is what it says. You know, when you vote, it means you are judging. Sorry about that, beloved brethren, a little bit glitch on te uh, technology. Okay, so where are we? We are talking about the triumph, right? The triumph that God is giving us. God's action will make us triumph. We shall again have plenty of reason to think. Now, how can we actually truly honor, praise, and thank God? What must we always bring whenever we worship? and thank him. This is what we should not forget. You know, because the devil, before I read this verse, uh, it's already there. 
I know it's not there yet, right? So before I read this verse to you, beloved brethren, so before we can read this, we will read this together. Many people believe that because of what had happened in the past, everybody is like them. No, They're, we are not questioning about offerings. We are questioning about how those leaders spent, spent the offering. How they are expending. It's not how they are actually teaching people to give. But because to thank God, this is what we can read in the Holy Scriptures. How are we going to thank God? What is it that God wants us to bring whenever we thank Him? What is He expecting from those who are thanking Him? It's not my word. It's what we can read. Psalms 50.23. Those people honor me who bring me offerings to show thanks. And I, God, will save those who do that. Those are God's words. Are we not believing in anymore, beloved brother? We still believe that. Personally, I believe that. I will do exactly what God wants. And in order for me to be worthy in thanking him, he said, Hey, bring me offerings. For what? To show thanks. You cannot show thanks without an offering, isn't it? That's what we can read in there. Bring me offerings to show thanks. So without an offering, you thank God? Are we showing thanks to him? Well, I don't know about what, how you're going to read that, but that's the way I perceive that. And that's the way many of us in the church of Yahushua perceive that. You know, the devil is so cunning. Always remember. See, now there, there, there is a, a mindset of people that religious preachers are all after people's money. And that's not true. That's not true. The apostles did not do that. Yahushua the Christ did not do that. But they preach about that. And we will continue preaching that because God himself said, those people honor me who are bring." Who bring me offerings to show thanks. We are honoring God by giving him offerings to show our thanks. And what did he promise those who do that? I will say those who do that. That's why he said. So we thank him with an offering. That's why whenever we come in a worship service like this. Whenever we think. Because every time we worship like this. We thank God. So what is it that we're not supposed to forget? Offerings. We already have studied about offerings many, many times. It was taught to us, beloved brethren, but the devil actually shook it. You know? That's why many people doesn't want to do that anymore. They don't, they don't believe in, in, in that no more. Many people say, why should I give? You know, It's a commandment. That's why we give. And God doesn't need that, but we need it. How can we continue? How can we move on? How can we propagate his words? How can we share our faith without funds? Beloved brethren, we don't need to, to tell you that we are going to build houses of worship because we don't need that. You are the temple. I am the temple now. You know, I saw a person before, you know, wearing that t-shirt. It says, the church has left the building. We don't need a building. Because God already said, I don't dwell in a building or in a house created or built by the hands of man. Because Yahushua, the Christ, already declared that his father's temple and his temple is you and me, his body. Make it clean. Make it obedient to him. See, always be reminded of this. God wants us to bring him offerings to show things. What is God's promise to those who will do exactly that? I, God said, will save those who do that. Therefore, complete the way we worship Yahuwah. It is incomplete worship if we do not bring him an offering. Every time we gather in worship, we thank him. And he said, to thank him, we must bring an offering. Is this the way we are worshiping and thanking Yahuwah our God? Well, it's up to you, beloved brethren. Again, it's not going to be imposed on anyone. But this belief must always be reminded to everyone who wish to serve Yahuwah, our God. Now, what does God expect from each of us? Yahushua. Here it is. 
Let us listen to what I shall be reading to you in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 22. As Yahusans, this is what he is expecting. Rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful. See, we know now how to thank God. He already said how he should be thanked to. Be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in the Christ Yahushua. Do not quench, subdue, or be unresponsive to the working and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Try to comprehend those words, beloved brethren. Do not scorn or reject gifts of prophecy or prophecies, spoken revelations, words of instruction or exhortation or warning. But test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good. Hold firmly to what which is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Withdraw and keep away from it. So what does God expect from each of us? Yahushua, rejoice, he said, always and delight in your faith. We are always delightful. That's why when people are asking us, are you not going to leave that religious thing that you have right now and, and rejoin us or return? No, we are not. We are going to do that because we are already, already delighted in what faith we got. In every situation, the Bible said, no matter what the circumstances, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. We are not grateful to Yahuwah only when good things are happening in our lives, even when we are experiencing bad times, sadness and sorrows, problems that we are probably having right this very moment. We are always grateful to Yahuwah because he allows things to happen to strengthen us for our own good. Whatever happens in every circumstances, in every situation, no matter what the circumstances did, we rejoice. We delight in our faith. What is Yahuwah's instruction? When things are happening, he said, test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good. Try to figure out, is that bad for you? Is what's going on in your life really bad? Test it carefully. So you can recognize what is good in there. Try to figure out, like Solomon. When he was beaten by an ant, he tried to contemplate, what did I do wrong? Because we are doing something wrong, so probably. Beloved brethren. We are, God wants us to be awakened. God wants us to listen to him. That every word that he said should always be taken seriously by you and me, by every Yahushan. That's why we are here to study. We are studying what God wants. And when we found out what he wants, we do it. We obey him with integrity. We are going to set aside whatever thinking we might have. Because we are going not to stop. But we will continue persistent prayer. Beloved brethren, thanking God is our duty. You know, only at the end of the year or during our birthdays or whatever, every day we thank God. When, when we were already done for the whole day, that we still have our life, are we not going to thank God? And every every week we God, are we not thanking God? Every time we thank God, we bring Him about us. We can only do that in a worship service like this. So you might be knowing, how am I going to give my offering? I know. I know how you're going to do it. It's right there on our website. You can ask. If you want to make an offer, that money will not go to anybody but to the purpose of God. 
He wants us to continue propagating. He wants us to spread these words. And that's what we are doing with those offerings. That we please and give honor and glory to His name. Thanksgiving, not for Americans only. We thank God that's Yahushua. We thank God that's Yahushua. And we will continue thanking God for the rest of our journey. Every time we gather, we are thanking God. And we know now what not to forget whenever we think. But it's up to you to convince yourself, beloved brethren. Like what the uh, one of the servants of God, Joshua said, if you want to serve other gods on the other side of that river, but for me and for my family, my family is listening here too. We will serve the Lord. No matter what. He saves us. He doesn't save us. We will continue say, serving our God, Yahuwah. God bless us all. May he continue to shower us his blessings every day so that we can always fulfill what he wants us to do. Let us all rise for our prayer. Merciful and loving Father, Yahuwah. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to hear your words. We are so grateful for you. Have you strengthened us with the spirituality? Now we know the truth. We are strong because nobody can trick us. Nobody can lead us away from you. We know that you are sending ministers. You are sending messengers. But they have time. Once you have laid them to rest, your time as your messenger is over. They are no longer your messenger. They are now being laid to rest. The message that you want them to put out, they were already they were able to accomplish. But we will continue because you are sending messengers today. May we all be convinced that your messengers will never use your words to profit. But it will be used to strengthen people, to let people know about you so that they can continue to know you and thank you and serve and honor you with integrity. Father, we will do exactly like that. So whatever the circumstances in our life, we will always be thankful unto you. We will never forget what you have done, the good deeds that you have done for us, the spiritual blessings that we have right this very moment, that we have the privilege to meet your only son on the day of the first resurrection. Thank you for including us into that faith. May we continue to propagate your words, Father, creating us humility and meekness, and create in every one of us generosity, that we will be willing to give and make sacrifices for you, for the honor and glory of your holy name. We pray for everyone, especially those who are sick at this very moment. We don't know. What's your plan? But we entrust our lives upon your holy hand. Please take good care of each and every one of us, especially those who are sick. You can make miracles. That's one way of you proving that you are the most powerful God. So when there is somebody who is in the brink of death, who is having sickness, please, we beg. Extend your helping hands, your healing hands, to anyone who believes in your name. But it's not what we want that is important, Father. It is your will that must be done. May you continue to deliver us from harms and danger. May you continue to be merciful unto us. For all of this we are asking in the name of your Son, our Lord and Redeemer, Yahushua the Christ. Amen.
May the saving grace of the Lord Yahushua the Christ, the love of our Father Yahuwah, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us today and forever. Amen. Beloved brethren, uh, please continue to share our faith to others. Keep on sharing it. You know, there's one way to tell you a story. There is one, uh, one of our, uh, one of our the ministers, uh, what he did is to uh, put a shirt with Yahuwah's name at the front and then Yahushua's name at the back. And there's somebody who approached him and hugged him for that. Said, that's the name of God. So it only means many people are already knowing the name of our God. That's one way of uh, sharing our faith. We have to tell people first to, to believe the name of God. Because once they believe that name, then they can hallow His name. They could be a part of two worshipers. Now, our Tagalog worship service are 10 a.m. Eastern Time and 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Saturdays. Our English worship services are noon Eastern Time and 2 p.m. Eastern Time on Sundays. The reason why we are, again, reminding everybody, because in uh, other countries, they don't have daylight saving time. So if you, you can pattern your time of worship uh, on the time that's showing there. If it is 10 a.m. Eastern time, that's the Tagalog worship service Saturday. 7 p.m. Eastern time, Saturday, that's the Tagalog worship service too. And at noon, 12 noon Eastern time in America, which is New York time, and 2 p.m. New York time, Sundays, uh, that would be the, uh, the time. You can also worship via Zoom at 403, that's that, uh, that, I think that's the channel number, 356-689, or via Facebook Live. Now, if you do have Facebook, you can actually, when you are attending a worship service like this, you can share. So it will be live on others. Please email us at questions at churchofyahusha.org with any question. Try to help yourself. You know, like what we always say, once you become a Yahushan, it is now time for everyone prove to Yahusha and to Yahuwah that we are worthy to meet Yahusha on the first, the day of the first resurrection. So we, we are not going to, to lead you to there, but you have to prove yourself now to God and to Yahusha the first. This concludes our wish series. May we all have a very good Sunday. Let's arise and follow our Lord Yahusha and receive the comfort of a loving God. Take with us His words divine, hope we faith with test of life. For we not for God is always on our side. Let us guide our faith.